Hi guys, and welcome to another Pushing Polygons. Today we are talking about Starfield. This game was shown off at the Xbox Bethesda Showcase several hours ago, and I've taken a little time to look at the class attributes, the traits that you can assign to your character, and some of the feats that you will have access to while playing the game. This game is gonna be one of my most anticipated RPGs of 2023, maybe with Dragon Age, Dreadwolf being the other, we will wait and see on that. But this game is a combination of Elder Scrolls, Morrowind, Oblivion, mixed in, of course, with some Fallout 4, with just a sprinkle of that Mass Effect mystique. With the game being set in space, with you being able to customize, with all these traits and feats in place. But guys, before I get into that, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you enjoy the content on the channel, please hit that subscribe button. But with that being said, let's go ahead and let's start with your character class and the attributes that are assigned to that character class. So what we can see here is that there is a large list of what Bethesda's calling backgrounds, but what they really are are character classes. They have three attributes that are assigned to them at the beginning. And well, let's just go through the list of character classes that we have so far. We have a bouncer, we have a beast hunter, a bouncer, a chef, a combat medic, which that's pretty cool. Uh, cyber runner, a cyberneticist, a diplomat, an explorer, a gangster. I would love to be a gangster in this game. That sounds kind of cool. Homesteader, industrialist, a long hauler. So I'm assuming that is some kind of uh, shipper. The, uh, of course, the uh, professor, the pilgrim and the Ronin. So all these classes are gonna have three traits. We're gonna go through just a couple of them here as Bethesda quickly uh, splashed them up on the screen. And uh, what you can see here is that we have uh, the chef, of course, talking about how they're a culinary expert and uh, many alien species have uh, ended up on their plates underneath their knife. So hopefully they weren't sentient species. That gives that a somewhat of a very dark take, if you will. And this uh, this class, of course, you can uh, research and craft special drinks. You get some extra damage using your melee weapons. So maybe this would be a good class to uh, specialize in hand to hand. And then you immediately gain 30 points of health. So you're gonna start out with a slightly better class or you're going to start out with more health for your class so uh, if you know in the early going uh, if you think the game is tough you know that that extra 30 points could be the difference between life and death and next of course we have the combat medic you get 10 percent to your pistols so this would be a slightly better class of course for pistols your med packs heal 10 percent more that's always a benefit, especially if if you don't uh, want the extra health. Maybe you uh, want to be able to recharge your health and your weight lifting. Well, you can lift an extra 10 kilograms. I think that's about five pounds. I would have to double check. But, you know, it, actually what I think would be interesting and we don't know yet if this is the case, but you see this in the video is that each planet has a different gravity. So like there's a moon that's in the uh, showcase video that is 0.91 gravity. I'm assuming it's of Earth. So uh, it would be actually kind of interesting if they allowed you to carry more on the planets where gravity was less and uh, less on planets where gravity was more. I think that would be interesting. Gameplay wise, that might not work out. That would definitely make it an old school RPG, but that's just a thought there. And then next we have the Cyber Runner. Now the Cyber Runner is uh, 
Got the trait again, a pistol certification, so you get an extra 10% damage with that pistol. You, uh, you can attempt to uh, hack advanced locks right off the bat, and you can store two auto attempts, which that's pretty cool. And then, of course, your persuasion gets a boost, um, uh, gets an increased uh, chance of success in, uh, on, on speech challenges. So in the dialogue discussion, and there was some of this in Fallout, uh, not so much. Well, I guess you could say since, well, actually, no. If I really think about it, they've had speech challenges since uh, Morrowind, if not before. I don't know if Morrowind was my first Bethesda game, so I can't speak to anything before that. If any of you have played games other uh, before uh, Morrowind, uh, let me know in the comments, please, if uh, they had speech challenges even that far back. Um, but, you know, getting a little uh, boost to your persuasion to maybe, you know, get a better deal or uh, be able to get some of that dialogue that uh, you uh, like, you know, that, that definitely could be a way to go. I do like the descriptions of some of this, you know, for this one, of course, from Neon to New Atlantis, the megacorps stand as a monuments to power, prestige and profit. Yeah, you've worked both for and against them, so you're you're, you're definitely walking the line uh, on the inside and the out. Often sacrificing conscience for credits. So this is definitely more of a rogue type character. So definitely an uh, interesting backstory and uh, definitely uh, something that I would consider playing in addition to that gangster. We'll move on to the traits and the feats and close out this video. And the traits are definitely something to keep your eye on. Now, you, of course, you have your extrovert, your introvert. You know, kids stuff is your parents' home that you can uh, go to, uh, but you send them a stipend, so they deduct money off from your account because of that stipend. And um, then you, of course, have the Raised in Light and Raised Universal Serpents Embrace. Now, these are apparently, we'll call them, I guess, religious factions in this universe. And so if you pick one of those, you get discounts at their shops uh, that are associated with them, but you are locked out of shops of any of the other two. So that is something, of course, to take into account when looking at this. And then Spaced uh, gives you the ability to have more endurance and more health uh, when in space, but you have less when you're on the ground, of course. There is some actual science behind that because like there was a study done just recently about somebody being in space long term and like they actually lost uh, some bone density, I believe, uh, was the report. So uh, in some respects, that's actually kind of cool that they included that in there. So with every trait, you gain something and then you also risk something. It'll be cool. You know, with the traits that, that I, I've been able to see and show, the ones that are in the trailer, what traits would you guys like to pick for your character? Which ones would you try first? That's going to be interesting to see how everybody's builds kind of uh, stretch out as this game comes in the next year. On to the feats, and this is where I say this is like a Fallout system. So you have physical feats, you have social feats, you have combat, science, and technology. This is similar uh, to the Fallout system. You had perception, and you had uh, armor, you had luck. Luck, of course, was always the weird one, but here what you can do is you can select these feats, and then by killing so many people with a weapon, you can level up to the next feat. One interesting thing that I actually saw in here, and I don't know if anybody caught on to it, was the fact that uh, there was a feat for the sniper. And this is definitely where I say we get some Mass Effect stuff in this because the sniper rifle actually has uh, some sway to it. Now, they talk about how 
Uh, when you've unlocked the first level of the sniper, that your scoped weapon, your scoped weapons are steadier and have less sway. Now, this was one of the things that they took out of the original Mass Effect, and Bethesda seems to be bringing it back. I'm really, really curious on how that is going to play out. Is that something that you guys? are actually going to care to see or do you wish that they wouldn't have put it in there i think it's interesting i actually got very good uh in the original mass effect not the legendary edition but the one that they put out on the 360 when i was firing the sniper rifle i could time a sway just right i knew kind of what the pattern of the sway was and um so that's going to be uh, very interesting to see. And then uh, as we go a little bit further here, what you guys can see is that there is the ability, of course, again, to buy up your uh, your trait and this is not dissimilar to the way it was in fallout 4 where you had uh, several levels to a trait. Of course, I believe there was i think it was four maybe it was five but the more you leveled up the trait the more of a progression that you would get with the uh with the game um so you know you had uh, if you became proficient with pistols of course you got 10 percent more 20 percent more 30 percent more i think it maxed out at I think it may have maxed out at 50% more and then it would give you a nice little uh, feature, which this one seems to do here where you get up to 30% more by rank three and then your rank four, um, it, it actually changes over a little bit. It's not more damage, it gives you much more range. So uh, that's a nice little um, change up for actually being able to put uh points into it or use certain weapons now with a thousand planets being out there they say that are explorable it'll be interesting to see and then uh it'll also be interesting to see kind of what traits uh are going to be added to guns uh because you'll be able to mod them they didn't they showed the modding but they didn't show uh really um what additions what subtractions you're going to get from that i guess we'll have to wait for a later video on that guys what do you think is this a game that you're looking forward to how do you feel about these traits what type of build do you want to build first in the starfield universe i'm looking forward to this game again i'm thinking we'll get it by march of april 2023 granted that there are no more delays i'm hoping todd howard and his team have got it together and that we will see this game within eight months guys as always i hope that you take care of yourselves out there and i will see you in the next video